here's the thing uh, end to end encryption is basically like a picket line right so if you're just having a party with uh, you and another person right uh, inside that picket line a very big one with a shrub etc only two people know but if you're uh, having a let's say a party with like 20 friends and uh, one of them uh, basically is recording all of that and they get hauled up by the police all 20 people are on video right so uh, what's happened in this case i think so specifically what people have pointed out is that the chats actually come from a group yeah so end to end encryption is basically enveloping uh, the the transmission of a message so uh, but the thing is when the message is delivered um, anybody can read the letter and if you sent a letter that same letter and possibly you photocopied it and sent it to 20 friends if one of them uh, basically the police just yanks it out from one person or they take the smartphone device from one person um, they get the entire group chat what other things can i do to safeguard say my information and this is very specific to instant messaging applications so okay so let me just take that very specifically if you're part of a group in which you think you're having conversations you would not like third parties to get to know number one practice what is called as data minimization by yourself okay if you're in a large group let's say a large group let me define it as eight to ten people <laughs> Because anything beyond that, I think so, is is uh, is like, uh, unmanageable. But if it's just eight to ten people, and uh, even if you have a, having very engaged uh, conversations with politics, given the situation we are right now across the pol uh, political spectrum, it's quite likely that somebody may associate something with someone, or you may face a certain degree of reputational risk, if nothing else, right? Yeah. So uh, it's best to have this conversation on signal and put a timer of, let's say, a week or uh, uh, even longer, like a month. But the chats basically are automatically deleted for everyone who's a participant in that conversation. Okay, okay. so there's a temporal limit set on uh, the information which is gathered. And there's a whole host of features which uh, allow you a de higher degree of facility and control, which WhatsApp does not provide at present. So I do know a lot of people who have shifted to Signal. There are some people who are also um, uh, uh, votaries of another instant messaging application, which is called Therma. Uh, Therma is not tied to a phone number, so they prefer that. Uh, there's also Telegram, which people prefer. However, Telegram has come under a fair degree of critique in the past for its protocols not being fully tested out. I would also like to indicate that WhatsApp is reasonably secure. However, there have been a certain amount of doubt cast on it given the recent chats. And the protection which you're getting in Signal are these features. But at the end of the day, you need to also know what you're talking about and what you're doing digitally does create a trade to some extent. And I know it's very tough during COVID, uh, but we need to consider that physical meetings quite often are the only way to do it. Uh, one yeah. way in democracies has been, uh, is not to worry about these issues because we are presuming a high sense of threat just to our daily sense of existence and liberty. So the underlying premise of a lot of these questions is, Am I a criminal? Yeah. And I would just like everyone to pause and think about it for a second. Why are we thinking like this? Is this, is, is, is this the way uh, things were supposed to be? So uh, device security is important. But ultimately, I think so. This is not an issue only of criminal procedure or technical safeguards. It's a core question of democracy. Yeah, no, no, of course. And these are kind of the foundational blocks that you expect already to be there. But um, you have to, f I mean, kind of fight slash work towards these safeguards yeah. to be there. So, so I'm saying signal. And if yeah. you're looking for specific guidance, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Follow three organizations which I really like. Okay. okay. One is uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which yeah. has two pages. Okay, one is called a self-assessment defense league or like self-defense league with respect to digital devices. And it's great. It maps your threat level. Okay, for people like me, it's high. For, <laughs> for people, for a lot of people, it's not that high. But, uh, and then it tells you what are the kind of services and tools you can use. Okay, yeah. so for instance, even with respect to video calling, you need to self-host 
Zoom on your own server with your own tokens. Okay, even with respect to private meetings. The second is called tactical technology, tactical tech. And the third is called Access Now, which also runs a specialized helpline for human rights defenders, journalists, and activists. All three of them provide credible guidance on what specific tools you can use. They give you updates. And just like we are consuming so much information on what's good for, let's say, um, any kind of complex machinery that we operate, which is very inherent to our lives, such as um, uh, anything which may concern our bread and butter. I think people need to also invest more time in getting to know what will make them more safe and secure online, given that from their banking to their personal lives are essentially digital. So I think people need to also engage with digital device security training with a higher degree of comfort, ease, and just saying that, hey, I'll possibly every month invest about one and a half hours to about two hours just checking if I'm following good practices, reasonable practices. Uh, do I have a password manager? Do I keep different passwords there, for instance? Is my two-factor authentication on for my um, email and the core e work email that I use? Uh, is my banking passwords uh, across different things uh, safe and secure? Have I put credit limits on all my uh, uh, cards? Uh, is my main bank account uh, not having net banking facility? Why? Because your main bank account, which has all your FDs, you don't want it there. So you can have these kind of conversations with your friends also. And I think it will be very useful and educative for people because you may not be facing a level of state threat, but everyone is under a threat that if their passwords and personal information leaks, uh, financial uh, frauds and transactions may occur. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just by the way, while you were saying all those, um, giving us all those suggestions, I just got really scared because I haven't done most of them, very honestly, and I have to go back. Well, and get yeah, so I, what else is just set up a two factor authentication on your phone? It's yeah. really quick and easy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. One way to do that is also to set up a yearly check in with yourself on your calendar, in which you just take half a day in December every year just to review a device security training. There are good ways you can approach this actually. But oh. I guess that comes with age. Just there on EFF's Tactical Tech and Access yeah. Now's website. It's very well uh, it's, it's it's very well done. The only problem is it's that um, they are in English. We need okay. resources which are much more suited for Indian audiences, not only in vernacular, but also catering to the kind of products and services people can avail here locally, because okay. sometimes they happen to be paid services and are just outside the pricing points of most people in India.